Hi, I am Edward, and today I will show you how to play Spheres of Life, the Mythical Forest. In this example, we will be looking at gameplay from the perspective of three players, but Spheres of Life is a competitive card game for two to seven players. So if you have one or even six friends, this game might be just right for your next game night. The goal of the game is to have the most points at the end of the game, and you get points by gathering an army of noble animals while avoiding the corrupted animals. Simple, right? In total, you will find six types of cards in the base game of Spheres of Life. 1. The Noble Animals. 2. The Corrupted Animals. 3. The Hero Cards. 4. Ability Cards. 5. Phase Cards, Day, Night, and Dream. 6. Cheat Sheet Cards. For now, let's remove everything and then explain all of the card types. As mentioned, the Noble Animal Cards grant you points while the corrupted animal cards give you negative points. But that is not all. Each animal comes in a set of three copies. For example, there are three noble owl cards, three noble dove cards, three corrupted snake cards, and so on. This is important because by collecting more copies of the same animal, you will get extra points. One copy will grant you one point, two copies, four points, and all three copies will grant you a whopping nine points. Of course, it goes both ways. For example, Three copies of Noble Rabbits will give you nine points, but three copies of the Corrupted Snake will reduce your points by nine. Next are the Hero Cards. Before the game, each player will take one Hero Card. Each Hero possesses a powerful ability that the players can use once per game. In total, there are seven Hero Cards and one of them, the Windmaster, is a bit more special than the others. The Windmaster Hero must be chosen in every playthrough, because this hero grants the player the first mover advantage. So the player who picks this hero will begin the game. Then, you have the ability cards. Ability cards are exactly what you expect. They are cards that have an effect, like allowing you to draw extra cards, changing the conditions of the game, or blocking another ability. But unlike the hero cards, the ability cards can only be used during the dream phase and each unused ability card at the end of the game is worth a negative point. So try not to use them too late. Now you might ask, what is a dream phase? So there are three distinct phases, day, night, and dream. Each phase is represented by its phase card. Each phase has its own unique gameplay mechanics, but about that a bit later. Lastly, you will find the cheat sheet cards. These cards won't be used in the game itself. They are reference cards outlining the quick rules of the game and explaining the effects of the ability cards. Now you know about the cards, let's start the actual game. In this example, we will have a look at the gameplay of three players. Before the game, remove the cheat sheet cards. You can use them or not. It is up to you. Next, separate the hero cards and phase cards from the main deck. Each player then picks one hero card, and one player must pick the Windmaster hero card. In the case no one picks the Windmaster, then the last player who picked their hero card changes it to the Windmaster hero card. Then take the phase cards and sort them in this order. Day, Night, Dream. And give these cards to the player with the Windmaster hero card. Then, shuffle the main deck as well as you can, set it in the middle of your table, and deal three cards to each player. Now you are ready to begin the game. The game always begins with the Day phase followed by Night Phase, followed by the Dream Phase. And the player with the Windmaster Hero will be the first one to make a move for the first three phases. After that, that is, after completing the first Dream Phase, the players will rotate in a clockwise direction. And so, the first day begins. In this phase, each player will get two new cards. Draw the same number of cards as there are players, and put the cards openly on the table. So, if there are four players, take four cards. But in our example of three players, we take three cards. Now the player with the Windmaster card picks up one card of their choosing. Then, the next player in a clockwise direction does the same. Continue until all players have picked up their cards. Players cannot skip their turn. Then each player draws one card from the top of the main deck. So, in total, every player will get two cards. One known, one random. With that, the day ends, and the night begins. When the night begins, draw two cards for each player, and put these cards openly on the table. So, if there are three players, 
put six cards on the table. In this phase, you are allowed to discard up to two cards from your hand. And then, for each card you discarded, you may pick up one card from the table. It may sound complicated, but basically, you can discard two cards, one card, or no cards. And then, if you discarded two cards, you could pick up two cards, one card, or no cards. If you discard one card, you can pick up one card or no cards, and you can choose to discard no cards, which is basically skipping your turn. Again, the first player with the Windmaster Hero card will begin the first night phase, and you continue in a clockwise direction. As you can see in this example, the first player discarded two cards and then picked up two cards. The next player discarded only one card and picked up one card. The third player did the same as the first player and exchanged two cards. After every player completes their turn, if any cards are left on the table, pick them up and place them back in the main deck, then shuffle the deck. Now the night phase ends and the dream phase begins. The dream phase is where all the fun and chaos come to life. In this phase, players compete actions and can use their ability cards. Players take turns and must complete one of three possible actions. Steal, gift, or exchange. Steal. The player takes one random card from another player. Gift. The player gives one of their cards to another player. You can give any card except the hero card. The other player cannot refuse the gift. Exchange. The player proposes an open exchange, one specific card that the player owns to exchange for another specific card. If no player agrees to the exchange, then you must do either steal or gift. Players complete their actions in a clockwise direction. You cannot skip your action phase. When every player completes their action, the dream phase ends and a new day begins. But wait, that is not all. You may be wondering, what about the ability cards? Yes, during the dream phase, you can use your ability cards, and you can do it at any time and use as many ability cards as you wish while the dream phase is active. The only limitation, you cannot play out ability card while an action is taking place or another ability card is being used, with the exception of block ability. The block ability does exactly what you think. It blocks another ability or action. Again, in the first dream phase of your playthrough, the player with Windmaster Hero card begins this round. In this example, the first player chooses to gift their Corrupted Snake card to player 3. As gifts cannot be refused, the player takes this card to their hand. Then, the next player chooses to steal a card from the third player. When stealing, you can pick one random card from the player's hand. Then it is the third player's turn. But before they can initiate their action, the first player decides to use one of their ability cards. This particular ability card allows players to draw one card from the main deck. The player makes the second player draw the card. The ability card was used, so the third player can take action. They decide to return the favor, and they gift one of their corrupted animal cards to player one. After the last player completed their action, the dream phase ends. After the first dream phase ends, then the player with the Windmaster Hero card changes the phase card to Day and passes the phase cards to the next player in a clockwise direction. This time the second player will begin this day. When the day is completed, pass on the phase cards to the next player and do everything all over again. Continue playing until there are no cards left in the main deck, and the player with the most points at the end of the game wins. But wait, let's have a second here and let me explain a few details about the end of the game. So, you remember that there are three phases, right? And they all have different mechanics. So, naturally, there are a few simple but very important differences about the end of the game. First, in case you draw the last card from the main deck during the day, then the game ends immediately. Why? Well, because during the day there is nothing else you can do. But if the last card is drawn during the night, well, then you need to wait until the end of the night phase, because every player should have the chance to discard their zero to two cards. And it is possible that not all cards will be picked up. If some cards are still left on the table, then put them back in the main deck and continue forward. But if no cards are left on the table, then the game ends. Similarly, to night phase. If last card is picked up during the dream, you still let all the players complete their turn 
and you still can use abilities. If at the end of the dream phase, there are no cards left in the main deck, the game ends. At that moment, when the game ends, you can no longer take actions, use abilities, or hero abilities. The only thing left is to count your points. How do you count points? Simple. Add points from noble animals. Reduce your points from corrupted animals and unused ability cards. And remember that two or three copies of the same animal adds bonus points. For example, this player have two noble rabbit cards, one noble deer card, three corrupted snake cards, and two unused ability card. That means this player will have a total of minus seven points. That is because the two rabbit cards give four points, one deer card give only one point, but a whole set of three snake cards give a negative nine points and the unused two ability cards give a negative point, each. In contrast, this player have all three copies of the Noble Bison, and a one copy of four different corrupted animals, and no unused ability cards. So in total, this player will have positive five points. That's it. You are ready to play the Spheres of Life. Of course, if you have any questions, refer to the rulebook or visit our website to find out specific scenarios not explained in the video. So what are you waiting for? Team up with your favorite hero and dive into the mythical forest to become the strongest hero? Good luck to you all.